We love villains on this channel, so what better time to cover Sauron than in this 10-part series on Lord of the Rings? So who was Sauron? Most people's knowledge of Sauron begins and ends with the Lord of the Rings trilogy. And if that's the case, Sauron as a villain may seem a little abstract to you. After all, most of the time when Sauron is on screen, it's just a big fiery eye. With the exception of maybe 30 seconds early in the film when we see him separated from the ring. But there is much more to the Sauron we see on screen. So much so that I'm surprised no one has yet made the history of Sauron its own movie. Tolkien created an immense history of this world, and Sauron's story is a fascinating one. So let's get into it. Sauron originally was called Myron, and he was a powerful and talented Maya, a lesser Ainu, one of the spiritual beings created by Eru Iluvatar at the beginning of time. Which what, huh? <laughs> like I said, Tolkien created a vast history of these characters, so let's break this down. In the hierarchy of Tolkien's world, Eru Iluvatar was the head honcho, the supreme god, numero uno. Eru then created the Ainur. All you need to know about the Ainur is that they are super powerful, immortal, and divided into two groups, the Valar and the Maiar. The Valar are more powerful than the Maiar, and they directly govern the world. The Maiar's purpose is to serve the Valar. They are the helpers. Not too bad so far, right? Okay, so within the Valar, the more powerful group of the Ainur, there is one guy called Ole. He is a divine blacksmith, a master craftsman. We're talking the best of the best here. Well, Sauron was a Maya, aka a helper or servant for Ole. So under Ole's guidance, Sauron became skilled in forging craftsmanship and order. He's learning all sorts of things like metallurgy, how to forge powerful weapons and tools, and the ability to manipulate and enchant objects. Hmm, perhaps this will come in handy later. Now, what you need to know about Sauron is he started out as a good and talented Maiar who loved order, structure, and perfection. And the thing about being obsessed with order and structure is one tends to develop a need to see it everywhere to be happy. Simply creating order for your own stuff is not enough. You're compelled to bring order to everything you see or else it bugs you. It gets under your skin. So while Sauron is learning to smith from Aule, his trajectory changes when he falls under the influence of Melkor, the most powerful of the Valar. Melkor's story is pretty good and pretty much requires its own video, but what you need to know about Melkor is in terms of power, Melkor was number two to Eru Iluvatar. Melkor was given a greater share of Eru's power. He can control and manipulate the elements. He possessed the ability to understand powers of the world more deeply than any other Valar. So he's super duper powerful. He's also rebellious, impatient, and wants to do things his own way. So while this is going on with Melkor, Sauron is also growing a little restless serving Ole, who was a little too chill for Sauron's tastes. Sauron wanted more power and control over creation. Seeing this, Melkor saw an opportunity to lure Sauron over to his way of thinking. Sauron's turn to Melkor wasn't immediate though. It was a gradual process of corruption. Melkor, seeing Sauron's need for order and perfection, at first presented himself as a kindred spirit. Hey, me too, buddy. I just want a stronger and more efficient world like you. So over time, Sauron becomes more and more captivated by Melkor's power and charisma, believing that following Melkor would allow him to achieve his goals on a far greater scale than if he remained a servant to Ole. So Sauron turns to Melkor. Now, unlike Melkor, whose approach was chaotic and destructive, Sauron was methodical. He valued structure and control, and it's this difference in method that allows Sauron to rise as Melkor's trusted lieutenant. Soon, Sauron becomes essential to Melkor's designs. He's overseeing many of his operations, constructing fortresses, breeding armies, and managing the administrative and logistical side of Melkor's reign. At this point, Sauron was not just a servant. He had absorbed and embraced Melkor's philosophy of domination and power and made it his own. 
Eventually, Melkor is defeated and cast into the void, and Sauron repents at first. <laughs> hey guys, I was just following orders. But he quickly falls back into his old ways and sees an opportunity to claim the dark power and dominion that Melkor had lost for himself. And from that moment on, Sauron's goal was to become the new Dark Lord using all he had learned from Melkor to dominate Middle-earth. And that he did. In addition to everything else, Sauron was nothing if not a smithy. Remember, he trained under the most talented blacksmith and learned everything there was to know. We know Sauron desires control above everything. So how does he achieve this? Controlling the elements? manipulating minds. Sauron was a blacksmith, so embracing the go-with-what-you-know philosophy, Sauron infiltrated the elves and manipulated them into forging the rings of power. These rings promised to grant the wearer influence and enhanced abilities, but really Sauron's intention was to control with the ultimate power of the One Ring, which he formed in secret by himself, and we all know how that would turn out. Eventually Sauron is defeated and his physical body is destroyed. But as he is a part of the Ainur, an immortal race, Sauron continues on, weakened and without a physical form, but nevertheless still alive. In Tolkien's books, the Eye of Sauron is often used as a metaphor for his gaze, will, and awareness. It symbolizes his power to seek out, control, and dominate. This eye is described as lidless, wreathed in flame, and a representation of his burning hatred, vigilance, and malice. It was an emblem of his essence rather than a literal physical form. In the Peter Jackson films, the Eye of Sauron is depicted as the literal flaming eye, set atop the tower in Mordor that we all have come to know and love. This is all a very brief summary of Sauron, but I hope it enhances your understanding of Sauron's beginnings. Thanks for watching.